Then the next one, this is the one that applied to you less, but the next one applies to you even more. Wala taqrabu zina. Don't go near zina. Zina is a man and a woman having a relationship with each other outside of wedlock, outside of marriage. A man and a woman becoming intimate outside of marriage is called zina. It is one of the greatest crimes in Islam. Murder, I told you before, murder is the taking of one's life, physical life, their body, doing damage to their body and making it, killing their body. And zina is killing of the, the soul, the ruh. In this ayah, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الزِّنَا And then, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسِ In the next ayah. In Surah Al-Furqan, you remember? Allah, Allah taught us about the slaves of Ar-Rahman. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرْ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ Allah said they don't call anyone other than Allah as a God. They don't kill, they don't do zina. Here what do you find? They don't do zina, they don't kill. He flipped the order of them. One of the benefits of that is to suggest that these are equal crimes. They're just as bad. In Islam, why is zina such a big deal? In our society, is zina a big deal? No, it's not a big deal. It's something celebrated. And actually, there are kids that are getting involved in it at an earlier and earlier age. This is not something that we're safe from as Muslims. We were never safe from this, not even in the Sahaba's time. Even in the Sahaba's time, we were never safe from this, which is why we had to be told, don't even go near it. Because there's ways you can get near it. Near illegitimate relations, you know. So now, you know, uh, back then, you, many of you don't know, but you're old enough to understand now. Back then, even in Sahaba's times, there were difficult situations. There were people that were in these kinds of relationships. It was a very open society in Medina. As a matter of fact, even in Mecca, a lot of people had relationships that had nothing to do with marriage. And Islam came and cleaned all that up. And a lot of companions were actually previously in those kinds of relationships and had to cut them off. So it was a, it's a really remarkable change that came into that society. Imagine a society where dating and having a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, or you know, breaking up and going off with another relationship is very common. And all of a sudden this religion comes and cleans everything up. Is that easy a change to make for a person? No. It's a, it's a massive change. It's a huge, huge change that was brought by, the, by Islam to those people. So don't think that they were just these holy, sacred people that were sitting around and the ayah came and they were already living by it. No, that's not the case. You know? They were so like addicted to alcohol that the ayat about alcohol came in three phases. Allah did not just reveal, don't drink alcohol. First He said the harm in it and the sin in it is more than its benefit. Then He said at least don't drink when you're drunk. And eventually years later He said, stop. It is from the work of the devil. He didn't start by saying it's from the work of the devil. Was it always the work of the devil? Yes, but he never told the believers that until the very end. You know? That came way, way at the end, one of the final revelations actually. Suratul Ma'idah, one of the last surahs to be revealed. There, that's where you find out that alcohol is completely haram. Why? Because these people were going through a change. So the society around us, even it can change. The point here is now it took so long to change. The point is it can change. The point is it can change. Those people were, you know, they, they were people of alcohol consumption for thousands of years. They had no, no standards as far as zina is concerned for thousands of centuries and centuries. And all of a sudden Islam came and within a few years, it all got cleaned up. It all got cleaned up. Now, what is Wala Taqrabu Zina about for you guys? Inshallah, probably we'll spend the rest of our session talking about just this ayah. Don't go near a zina. Don't go near the act of, you know, intimacy with another, with, with someone who's not your husband or not your wife. The Muslim wouldn't even think that. We would, we would stay away from it. But Allah is not telling us to not do zina. He's telling us don't go near it. And there's a difference. The difference is I want you to imagine the sin itself is right in the middle. It's the circle. But around it, there's a gravitational field. Like the planet Earth has a gravitational field. If you're inside the field, what's going to happen? You're going to get pulled in. You understand? If you're outside the field, you can float around. You're free. But if you get close enough, you're going to get sucked in. You're going to get sucked in. So now what is this? And the, the gravitational field, by the way, is it visible or invisible? It's invisible. So you getting close to zina is actually never sensible. It's not visible. You can't point at it and say, ah, you're in the field. You can't. You can only tell that for yourself because you're going to feel the pull. The only one who can tell is you <laughs> who's feeling the pull. On the outside, nobody will be able to point to you and say, you're doing something wrong. The only time they can point to you and say they're doing something wrong is when it's too late, you've already crashed. 
You understand? When the bad has already happened, when the crash has already occurred, then when, that's when you can tell something bad has happened. Until then, it's all on you to recognize whether you're being sucked into the wrong direction or not. So it starts with something innocent. Okay. It starts with something innocent. It starts with something that's like, you know, just a, just a conversation, just a smile, just a salamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam, nothing big deal, you know. You guys are of the age, now you're going to become more and more curious about what you're worth, what your, what your ratings are, and whether or not you get the kind of attention that you're hoping for. So you're going to make conversation, innocent conversation with a girl that you guys talk to a girl at school, maybe a lab partner, maybe like a girl that sits the aisle over in the, in the class. Hey, do you have yesterday's homework? Yeah. <laughs> wow, you have beautiful handwriting. Cha, beautiful handwriting. That's a good one. It's a good one. Thank you. Oh. Hey, aren't you in my other class? You know she's in your other class. But still, aren't you in my other class? Why, yes, I am. <laughs> and then... <laughs> little by little. And that was just, okay, then you're like, okay, that's enough for today. Tomorrow I shall try a little more. I got like a four month plan. <laughs> okay? And it's innocent. And if somebody says, what are you doing? I just asked for homework. What? I didn't do anything. And somebody asked the girl, what are you doing? What? I just gave him my homework. What, what, what did I do? What? I didn't do anything. He just said I had nice handwriting. That's all. There's nothing. Nothing. It's completely innocent. Nobody on the outside will actually be able to blame you that you did something evil or crooked. Not, it, can't be, it can't be proven. All you will find out though is there's something going on deep inside you. There's a feeling nobody knows about except you. And that's the gravitational pull of zina. That little tiny little feeling. It's very innocent and cute and fuzzy at first. Feels kind of good. Feel kind of like, hmm, tingly. You know? Then from there, you're looking for that person. You're, but they're not, they don't realize you're looking at them, you're staring at them. Then from there, you try to find them on Facebook or somewhere else. And hey, I didn't know you were on Facebook. <laughs> There's only like half the planet on it. How are you on it? It's amazing. You know, you start tagging and liking on Facebook. It's just innocent still. And a little compliment here and there, a little, a few LOLs here and there, you know, phone numbers get exchanged, WhatsApp gets exchanged, stuff happens, it happens little by little, one step at a time, one step at a time, drip by drip by drip, and you don't realize what you're getting involved in, she doesn't realize she's getting involved in. And this is how things go from nothing to everything, and it's terrible. Like people end up in terrible, terrible situations. And it's never going to be what you think. Never. You think it's, you know, like the, the movies or whatever, and then you end up with this person, and then you find out what they really like, and a year later, you, I made a huge mistake, I want nothing to do with you, I don't even want to hear their name again, et cetera, et cetera, I hate them so much. Because that amusement is gone. See, the only thing that's making you curious about each other at this point is your raging hormones. It's all, especially for the boys. It's just your hormones. It's not genuine emotion. It's not, you know, Allah, when He describes marriage, you know how He describes marriage? He, he describes you, men, as muhsineen, with a sad, not with a seen. Muhsineen with a sad. You know what ihsan is? Ihsan is to bring people into a fort, like a military fort. He says men should have the intention of marrying women, and when they marry them, it's like they brought them inside a fort, like they're going to protect them from everything. And they're going to provide all of their needs. You know ancient forts, they had food supplies for months and months and months. In what case? In case there's an attack from the outside. And nobody can penetrate this fort and get inside because it's got fortifications and it's, you know, it's secured over and over again. And they can deflect the attacks from the outside. Like you're bringing women into your camp, into your fort, into your protection. You're going to take care of every single one of their needs. Do you even understand what that means? You don't. Women have difficult emotions to understand for men. They do. Sometimes they're going to cry, you're not going to know why. And they won't tell you either. <laughs> should be crying. Why are you crying? You wouldn't understand. 
try me, I'll understand. You wouldn't understand. Okay, just leave me alone. I just need to be left alone. Fine, I'll just go play basketball. <laughs> you go, and now she's really mad. Why are you mad? Because you left. <laughs> I don't understand. Exactly. <laughs> I told you, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> You'll learn that over time. It's not easy. You're, you're, you're now, when you get married, there are two people that have lived completely different lives. They don't know anything about each other. And they're going to spend their, the rest of their life together. It's going to take a while before they get used to each other. 